Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, so I'm going to take you on a whistle-stop tour of some work we've been doing um, looking at small dinosaur taxa, very, very small dinosaur taxa, um, especially theropods, um, recovered from methonium microsites uh, in the UK. Now, as mentioned this morning in some talks, the mid-Jurassic um, is a very important phase in terms of dinosaur evolution and diversification, but actually the global record is very, very poor especially um, for small body taxa that don't preserve well. So this, this is your sort of classic mid-Jurassic large-bodied theropod. Uh, in the UK, the records are managed by the large uh, tetanurin theropod, Megalosaurus, Magnosaurus, Durivenator, and the, what, probably the smallest one we've got uh, good remains of is a small Tyrannosaurid, um, Proceratosaurus. Um, the smaller taxa, which of course are much more interesting, um, and what we're interested in, are less well known. So we've been looking at some of these small taxa from a number of microsites um, throughout the Bethonian in the UK. So to give you some context, there's four sites we're looking at. Um, we've got, most of them are in the uppermost Bethonian, um, up here in the forest marble or the top of the white limestone, and one site is down here in the Chipping Norton, Norton limestone formation. So we've got Watton Cliff in Dorset, we've got Kirkington and Wood Eaton sitting in Oxfordshire at the top of the white limestone formation, and then we've got Hollins Lizo quarry down the bottom um, in the Chipping Norton limestone. So with the exception of Wood Eaton, um, where we discovered the microsite in about 2014, um, the microfauna from, from the rest of the sites has already been described um, at least in some, at some level. Um, and most of the, in fact, all of those sites have, have also got associated larger dinosaur remains. And in fact, it's the discovery of those remains that in many cases prompted the discovery of the microsites. Um, the dinosaurs from these sites, at least the micro dinosaurs from these sites, have been mentioned in, in the literature in the past, uh, Susan Evans, for example, and Sarah Metcalf, but they haven't actually been described uh, in any great detail. So just a little bit, bit more setting. So in terms of paleo environment, um, most of these deposits, they represent shallow, brackish, or freshwater uh, ponds or lakes on marginal marine environments. Um, and they, they, they tend to be formed on emergent carbonate platforms uh, or restricted shallow lagoons. Uh, even Watton Cliff, which actually on this particular map is shown as totally marine, um, even Watton Cliff is actually marginal marine. Uh, it's very, very close to land. Um, and with the exception of Wood Eaton Quarry, all of these reports are very, very geographically restricted and of a very, very small um, aerial extent. This is actually the section at Wood Eaton. Uh, there's the forest marble and that's the microvertebrate horizon just below an overbank or paleosol deposit. And we've taken out about six tonnes of this particular horizon, um, all by hand, from, from a vertical section. Um, so Wood Eaton actually seems to represent a much larger deposit. Um, we think it's possibly analogous to the present-day Fleet uh, Lagoon in Dorset, uh, where you've got a lagoon separated by the sea by some sort of barrier. Um, it's brackish to fresh water, you get tides overlapping the barrier to, to pull in marine uh, water, and it, it's constantly uh, refilled with fresh water from the land. Um, vertebrate remains from these sites, um, they're typically frag fragmentary postcranials, um, isolated teeth and scales, mostly teeth. We've got thousands and thousands and thousands of very, very small teeth. So these, this is from Horns Lizo, uh, and this is a concentrate of, of mostly crocodile teeth um, from the deposit. Um, apart from dinosaurs, we've got mammals, we've got pterosaurs, we've got fish, we've got frogs, we've got other amphibians, salamanders, uh, we've got turtles, um, we've even got reworked shark from the lower limestones of the white limestone formation. And in terms of the dinosaur taxa, we've got very small theropods and very, very small ornithischians. Um, unfortunately, we are entirely limited to looking at tooth morphology uh, for these small dinosaur taxa. There are no other identifiable um, postcranial remains from, the, from these dinosaurs. So we've had to quantify tooth shape or tooth variability uh, using statistics, a mixture of PCA and discriminant function analysis, and combine that with character descriptions. Um, it's probably just worth noting that um, theropod teeth can be diagnosed to higher level clades um, using stats, but there's so much overlap of morphospace that you do need to look at the characters as well. If you just put, do a multi-taxic um, static analysis, you're going to get so much overlap in morphospace as to make it not worthwhile. You need to look at um, uh, pairwise 
discriminant analysis to get any, make any sense out of this. So these are examples of some of the teeth we're getting out, uh, some of the theropod teeth we're getting out of these deposits. Um, these range, well, they're all very, very small, as you can see from the scale bars. Um, and they range from teeth with totally unserrated crowns, um, such as this. These are all highly lingually labelly compressed. It's not very clear on that one, but they are. Um, we've got tall, slender crowns. Which we only have one denticulated carina. We've got crowns that are denticulated on both carina. We've got some teeth which have got much um, larger, apically pointed and hooked uh, denticles. So, Liza said, the main uniting factor of these is they're very, very, very small. Uh, the teeth range in size from about half a millimetre to maybe five millimetres uh, in crown size, which is the maximum we've got from these sites. Um, some actually may represent juveniles um, and even hashlings. From wood eaten quarry, uh, we've recovered a large amount of dinosaur eggshell fragments. And this is really, really small eggshell fragments. The biggest piece we've got is maybe half a centimetre in size. Uh, it's, very, it's very, very thin, but it's typical sort of dual and triple layer uh, reptilian dinosaur eggshell. Um, but morphologically and statistically, none of these teeth appear to represent known Bethonian UK taxa. If we compare them to small dinosaur taxa from North America, so dromaeosaurs and troodontids, um, these exhibit, uh, inhabit sorry, the same general morphospace as in this case. So we've got troodontids and dromaeosaurs over here. Um, and also another cluster over here, which is a cluster of Upper Cretaceous um, birds and this rather enigmatic tooth taxon called Paranchoidon. Morphologically too, um, these are uh, trudontid teeth and these are dromaeosaurid teeth. For example, the trudontids have these large hooked apically pointed denticles. Uh, the dromaeosaur teeth have this beautiful figure of eight basal cross section. They have twisted carony on them. So I think it was a whistle top tour, and it is. Um, so in conclusion, we've got about four demonstrably quantifiably different morphotypes um, of tooth morphotype that don't overlap any of the named taxa from the UK Bethonian. Um, so the Bethonian record of the UK is, is a lot more diverse in theropods than has previously been recognized. Um, and these new records include dromaeosaurs, an earlier Trudontid, and that confirms some earlier work that Susan Evans and Andrew Milner wrote about when they first described, for example, some of the Kirkington uh, material. Um, and there's also that intriguing grouping, which I showed in a previous graph, um, which includes Paranchoidon and some bird teeth uh, from the Upper Cretaceous. To be honest, it's not that surprising that we have uh, these clades down there, because phylogenetically, um, these clades diversified in the early, sorry, in the middle Jurassic. Um, and this tends to confirm that phylogenetic hypothesis. <coughs> Um, and these results, therefore, are actually, the, at the moment, um, they are the earliest global um, data points of these particular taxa. Uh, they also confirm the importance of these Middle Jurassic microsites uh, in the UK. Middle Jurassic deposits are quite rare, terrestrial deposits are quite rare, and so to have these in the UK and with these stats coming out, I think highlights their importance. Um, and it also highlights the fact that actually small-bodied dinosaurs are a very, very common part of middle Jurassic terrestrial ecosystems. It's worth noting we're getting just as many small Ornithischian taxa coming out of these deposits as we are theropod taxa. And I'd just like to finish by thanking a few people that helped on this, um, especially people sat over there, David Ward and Emma, who have uh, dug out lots and lots of sediment um, from, from Wood Eaton Quarry. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>